cutting on a lathe. We've all done it. Some of us enjoy switching change gears, taking scratch passes, using red pitch gauges, and then taking 10 passes. Screw cutting has its place and can produce beautiful threads, but it's slow and it's prone to error. Many home shop lathes are worn out, or missing the required components for producing accurate and reproducible threads. This lathe, for example, was missing all of the change gears, and many of the gears in the quick change gearbox were broken when it was obtained. Developing an electronic lead screw rejuvenated the machine, allowing for easy selection of feed rates, eliminating the need for change gears. However, wear in the lead screw and half nut mechanism cannot easily be accounted for without installing and monitoring encoders. As a result, screw cutting is still a treacherous pursuit, often leading to despair. Thread cutting dies provide an alluring alternative to traditional single point screw cutting, allowing for rapid production of accurate threads. In this project we will design and build a die stock to be used on a lathe. The assembly of the die stock body is shown on your screen now. The main body is composed of five components. Through the centre we have a support tube. On each end we have die holders. One size accepts one inch dies and the other accepts two inch dies. Adapter inserts may be produced to fit other die sizes into these holders, for example 13 16 inch and 1.5 inch dies. While not recommended, this die stock is likely to be used under power. As such, there is a risk of running a die into a shoulder. Conventional die stocks have no allowance for such an occurrence and as a result can be rather dangerous or risk damaging freshly cut threads at least. This design incorporates the concept of a friction clutch mechanism, allowing for adjustable breakaway loads, thereby improving the safety of the device. The two ends and remaining two components all serve as functional components in the clutch assembly. A cone clutch interfaces directly with the one inch end and a pressure plate is loaded by set screws on the two inch end. The cone clutch also serves as a handle and is hardened, so as to reduce the risk of galling when slipping against the pressure plate and the die holder. The first part to manufacture is the support tube. The fits given in the tolerances are to allow for concentric assembly and any misalignment between the lathe centres. In this case, the outer diameter will simply be obtained by sanding the mill scale from a piece of 25mm round bar. The internal diameter will first be drilled and then bored to size. The tube can then be parted and sharp edge is broken. A potential improvement to this design will be to cross drill dimples for the die holder retaining screws to register against. Next we will work on the cone clutch. This component will be manufactured from 4340 round stock in one operation. It is essential that the taper angle of the cone matches with the 1 inch die holder end. As such, the compound shall not be adjusted between manufacturing both components. The M8 hole for the handle can be drilled using the tool post mounted drill holder. Keen viewers will notice an unfortunate deviation from the drawings, where the taper is cut to the 25mm bore instead of a flat register. This has the undesired effect of modifying the contact patch of the clutch in the finished assembly. The taper surface should be either ground or lapped to mate with the 1 inch die holder end. The cone clutch should be hardened by heating to 850 degrees Celsius before quenching in oil and tempering at 450 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. Failure to harden the clutch will result in rapid wear. After completing the turning operations for the cone clutch, we can make use of the remaining stock still in the chuck to make the pressure plate. The part is already concentric, has the correct bore and a flat face. As a result, the only operations we need to perform are end milling recesses for the set screws, breaking edges and parting off. The tool post mounted drill holder is able to be used in conjunction with the indexing spindle lock to perform end milling of the recesses. A future project will be required for developing an improved system. 
Perhaps a spindle brake and a more concentric drill chuck will be in order. Work can now commence on producing the two die holding ends, we will start with the one inch end. As always, the first operation is to ensure the stock is concentric with the lathe spindle. The stock is then drilled and bored to 19mm before the one inch pocket is bored. The die retaining screw holes are then cross drilled at 45 degree spacings and the stock is parted to allow for work to be completed on the other side. Cutting the 45 degree taper for the clutch surface is done with a boring bar and the lathe running in reverse. As you will recall, the compound was left at the original 45 degree setting in an attempt to ensure both tapers match. After cutting the taper, the surface is ground using a small wheel installed in the tool post mounted drill holder. A vacuum source is used to extract the grinding particulates. After the clutch surface is completed, the bore for mounting to the end of the body can be brought to size and the screw holes can be drilled and tapped. I don't really know anything about grinding. I think the grinding wheel was either not turning fast enough or was just made from a stupidly soft material. It did clean up the surface of a part, but most of the wheel was worn away by the process. Perhaps the viewers can provide tips in the comment section. The 4340 steel used for manufacturing this part is particularly susceptible to work hardening. When drilling one of the mounting holes, I inadvertently allowed the drill to rub, and the result was predictable. The steel was almost as hard as the drill. Running a stub drill at a low speed with sufficient coolant was used to break through the hardened layer, and the part was saved. The final component to have manufacturing steps described in this video is the 2 inch die end. This is a feature rich part, consisting of both axial and radial hole groups. As such, the phasing of hole groups is important if one wishes to avoid interference between holes. We will work on the features from the die side first. After facing the stock, we will drill and bore a central hole and 2 inch in diameter pocket. We can then drill and tap the radial die retention screw holes as well as the axial pressure plate loading screw holes. The axially drilled holes have the advantage of being able to be tapped in place with the aid of the spring loaded tap follower. However the follower is only of partial value in this situation as my small taps do not have centre holes, therefore the follower is more of a visual aid than anything else. The part may then be turned over to complete the remaining steps. You must be careful at this point as the phasing of the radial holes used for retaining the end on the body must be such that they do not intersect the axial holes used for loading the pressure plate. Otherwise the part won't work, as you can imagine. The 
Here we have the completed die stock. Drawings for the arbor and handle are not included in this video, as each application will have different requirements. For example, most slaves have better alignment characteristics than mine does. The handle is a fairly trivial component to machine, but once again, everyone has different preferences. This handle is made from some silver steel, allowing for hardening in the future if desired. Most people would probably also prefer a slightly longer handle. Adapters for other die sizes are also left as an exercise for the viewer. I'll make some when I require them. A box was also cobbled together to store a die stock, as well as any adapters and dies. The box was made from recycled Rimu wood, so it's a bit rough. The green felt liner inside it really improves the visual appeal. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'd like to thank Emma's Spare Room Machine Shop for hosting this event and encouraging people to produce content. I hope to improve my video creation skills in the future. Please view and engage with the rest of the entries from other home machinists in this competition by following the hashtag TMC2020. By building a community we will all improve our skills and we will be able to achieve great things. Thank you. Bye.